Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how to build this closet with these bifold doors on part two of the house reno on Dad It Yourself. All right, so I'm in that front bedroom. It's a little echoey in here, and you can probably hear the guys tearing the floor out in the kitchen. Uh, timeline on this, these videos is going to be a little weird because we're doing multiple projects at the same time. But like I said in the intro video, I have to put a closet along this wall. And it's going to be about uh, six feet across. So it'll come right down the wall to about right here. And then come out away from the wall about two feet. And then I'll have a set of bifold doors. So what I need to do first is take off that base molding. That's a lot harder than it looks. Look at the kind of damage I did right there. I may end up just having to cut into this, leave the stuff that's going to be inside the closet, and just kind of slice out where the wall is going to go and then fit some pieces in there to match. So, oh well, that was a valid attempt. So this may be a little hard to see, but what I've marked out here is, so that's the drywall, that's the drywall. Here's the bottom plate, and then this three quarter inch line represents the casing of the opening, plus a little room for shimming. That's about three quarters of an inch. And that makes it a total of 24 inches from the back of this wall to the face of this drywall, which is a normal depth for a closet. So what I need to do is slice out the base molding here and where I've marked over here as well. My luck, there was a nail right in the middle of these. You're going into the wall. So I pulled that second piece out. And look at that. There's a barcode on it. Bet you I'll be able to find that now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and build the bump out for this corner. And pretty much what it is, is two two by fours studs that go from floor to ceiling from a top plate to a bottom plate, which are about four inches away from the wall. And I'm using three and a inch uh, construction screws with T25 hex head on them for a nice bite. And I'm gonna screw that into the floor into the bottom plate of the exterior wall and into the top plate of the interior wall. And I don't think I'm on a stud there, but there is a nail in the hole in the center. So maybe I'll get lucky. I'll have to check that with my stud finder. Okay, so that's all in. Got super lucky. There's actually a stud behind that stud. So I was able to screw it in in multiple locations up that back stud to secure it to the wall, even though it really didn't need it. I mean, I screwed it in through the floor to the base plate and up through the top into the top plate. So that's pretty secure. That's not a load bearing wall, it's just a divider. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing over here in this corner, and that shouldn't take too long. Okay, I got the second wall up. So now what I need to do is build pretty much a box beam that goes across here that acts as the header for the door. And again, this isn't structural. Um, I could have done king studs and jack studs here, but I don't know if you can see it, but there's not a lot of room here. So I couldn't have got three studs in here and then putting this stud back up against this to use as a jack stud, my door opening would be too wide or it would be over this way. And we need this little reveal back here in this corner and this reveal right here. So I'll build another box. And what that helps too is this ceiling is nowhere near flat. 
So if I would have built an entire front wall and had to lift it up this way, that would have been a huge pain in the ass as it hit the ceiling as it undulates around. So let me get to building that box now. All right, got that completely done. That looks really good. Um, just need drywall, so let's go cut some drywall. Okay, so all the drywall's on. Fancy, huh? Again, this is not structural. Literally, I'm building this to hold a set of bifold doors. All right, so my goal now is to get mud on this so it can dry overnight. It's getting late in the afternoon and I don't feel like being here all night. All right, what do I got? Okay. Got a dust control USG sheetrock compound straight out of the bucket. Got a six inch knife, got a two inch knife, metal bucket, some paper tape, and that's all. I'm just gonna seal up the joints, put a piece of corner bead on here, and all the screw holes, and I'll be done with that today and let that dry overnight. Okay, got all the drywall mudded up. That's probably one coat. I'll probably need a second coat here with a wider knife in the morning. And then maybe just to feather this out a little bit more right here. And then there's a couple of those joints in here. There's one up over in this corner and one up in this corner. But I'm about to do something that is going to drive the drywall purists insane. See this inside corner right here? Right there. I'm going to use caulking to fill that in. To get a mud base on there against a painted surface, it's just never going to look good. I'm going to run a bead of caulk right down that. You're going to paint it and you're never going to see it again. Check it out. Okay, day two at the reno house. Looks like, what do we got in here? Looks like that's good. Ready for the tile guy to come in today. And yeah, let's go check that bathroom out. Uh, that looks like it's good and dry too. Let's go check out my drywall now, huh? Yeah. Well, I knew this wasn't going to be dry because when I walked in the house this morning, the heat was off. The homeowner uh, turned the heat off, not realizing that I needed the house to stay above 50 degrees so that drywall mud could uh, dry. So, got the heater back on again, right here running. And we'll get this house warmed up and hopefully that'll dry and I can put a second coat on it today. I was able to get the opening all cased out to match the rest of the house. Came out really nice. Look at that. You know what they say, caulk and paint make a carpenter what he ain't. But that looks really good. Uh, still waiting on this to dry, as you can see. Here's dry, here's not dry. And it's been six hours. So the house is a nice even 60 degrees. So hopefully this will dry overnight, but we're not coming back till Tuesday and it's only Friday. So we got a two or three days and then I will sand and prime these and paint it. And then we'll put the doors in and the shelves in and this one will be done. 
So I've got this all sanded now, finally dried over the weekend. Uh, I had to touch up my little caulk line a couple of places where it uh, shrunk, where it was a little bit thicker than normal, but it's all good. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this in with paint and then roll it uh, with a roller. And the awesome part is there's no texture on this. This is just rolled. You can see it. So I don't have to worry about texture in that and matching it. So let's get started on that. And for those who are curious about why I didn't prime the walls, because I'm using Bear Marquee single coat, but I'll probably end up putting two coats on just for a nice thick coat. All right, so there it is. Through the magic of video editing, all of the paint is done, two coats. Have to do a little touch up on the ceiling over in this corner and then paint the trim and put the baseboard in and then we'll hang the doors and I'll be done with this portion. So have the new baseboards in. So these are all MDF factory Home Depot style. And then so is this one and this one back here. But this one that runs along this exterior wall is an original baseboard for this house. So it was kind of fun um, getting that to fit well. This corner's a little janky, but I did what I could. But everything else looks good. Just gotta touch up my paint from yesterday and we'll move on. All right, so where are we at? Well, I got that awesome functional wire shelf put in there. I know everybody loves wire shelving, but it matches what's in the other bedroom. And again, this house is for sale. All the paint is done. Everything else looks amazing. Look at that. First step was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, draw a line down the center and screw the rails in. Now, doors come in two kind of sizes. So they 30 inches and 24 inches. So this opening is sized for 60 inch doors and it is actually about 61 and a half inches. So that gives me a little teeny space right there in the middle and then a little space at each end. So quarter inch, quarter inch, and about three eighths of an inch in the middle. And those doors should close nicely. Okay, next step. So I learned a little lesson. This little tabby thing needs to be towards the center and the hole needs to be towards the outside. And I had a 50-50 shot on both and actually got it wrong on both. So I had to take at least one of these tracks out. I took this one out so I could slide everything out the end, flip it around, put it back in, do it to this one, and then screw everything back up. All right, got the bottom plate screwed into the wall. These are directly centered over the top rack. And then I'm gonna start putting the pins in the doors and we're gonna hang the doors. Okay, I got the doors hung and you adjust them by loosening and tightening this and moving the door out from the jam. And then the other adjustment is right down here on the bottom where this thing is. There's a little knurl screw in there that you twist up and down to kind of get your reveal on this side of the door and then square the doors up. I'm pretty close. Not perfect, but I can't complain. And my reel's pretty even all the way down. Okay, let's put some knobs on these. Okay, 
we're gonna call this closet a wrap. Everything's painted, trimmed, touched up, doors are installed. They work great. And close nicely. And I have a happy customer. But that's not the last thing to do in this house. Gotta keep moving. This is the first project completed of many to do in this home reno. But it came out really nice. Three days, framing, drywall, patch, paint, finished carpentry, and installing these doors. Time to move on to the next one. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may like. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching Down Yourself. We'll see you in part three.